Hey everybody, it's Jackie Smiley with Smiley Mama. It is a beautiful snowy day today and everyone is outside sledding. So I wanted to start um, a series on breastfeeding challenges. So I hope you'll stick with me for the first video. So we're gonna talk about several different things in this breastfeeding series, and this video is dedicated to the NICU. Where to begin? Um, if you are a mama who have breastfed your baby, odds are you've come across some challenge throughout your journey. I've been breastfeeding for the last eight and a half years straight. I had about a month break between my first baby and my second baby. So I've breastfed through two pregnancies. I tandem nursed for about six months. Um, I've had NICU experience, undersupply, oversupply, pumping, you name it, mastitis, so many different experiences throughout the last eight and a half years. So I am not a lactation consultant. There are some amazing lactation consultants out there. And if you're experiencing some challenges, I would definitely recommend that you visit one of them. Um, if you're local, send me a shout out and I will be glad to recommend some people to you. Um, but this is just a mama's experience and I hope that some of these things can um, encourage you and help you through your breastfeeding journey. Nobody wants to have their baby in the NICU. It is not a fun experience. Um, however, 10 to 15% of babies who are born in the US will be sent to the NICU for various reasons. And I'm so thankful that we have um, modern medicine that can help us in different areas, especially with premature babies who need assistance breathing, um, heart defects that they can surgically fix. I mean, there's amazing things that they're doing in NICUs. However, NICUs tend to not be very breastfeeding friendly. We have some amazing hospitals here in St. Louis, um, and I've had NICU experiences at two of the major hospitals, um, and both of them came with challenges. So my first baby was born at 33 weeks and one day, so she was about two months premature. She spent 26 days in the NICU, and it felt like a lifetime. It was um, definitely the hardest thing I think I've ever gone through. Um, so specifically talking about breastfeeding, um, they did not allow me to breastfeed my baby. Um, <clears throat> she did have to be put on a ventilator at one point, so I think I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that babies who are on ventilators really can't breastfeed because um, there's so many tubes and things helping them that there's just no way they could coordinate all of that. Um, learning how to suck, swallow, and breathe at the same time can be overwhelming to a tiny little body. Um, however, once she got off the ventilator and um, just had like the tube in her nose giving her some oxygen. At that point, breastfeeding could have been established. I believe they let me um, nurse her maybe once a day, something like that. Now my, my brain's a little foggy here, but I'll do the best I can. So I was pumping and they told me to pump, I believe every three hours around the clock and they said I could space it out even further than that at night to like four hours, something like that. Um, I actually believe that that's one of the reasons that I struggled with low supply with her. So I tell new mamas who have to exclusively pump for their NICU babies that you really should be um, pumping at least every two to three hours round the clock. If you think about what a newborn baby would be doing, that's what we're trying to mimic. So. Four hours is quite a long time. Sure, some newborns do go four hours. Um, and maybe you are just completely exhausted because it is exhausting having a baby in the hospital. Um, so if, if you need a four hour stint, mama, go for it. But 
Um, if we're just looking at trying to maintain supply, then I definitely recommend two to three hours um, between pumps. They also limited how much um, time we got to hold our baby. And this one just breaks my heart. It broke my heart then and it breaks my heart now. Um, I understand that they have reasons behind that. Um, but from the research I've done, and specifically um, Dr. Jack Newman out of um, Canada, he's a really big advocate for breastfeeding premature babies. He's done a lot of research and so have I. I've, I've read a lot of research on this topic. Um, and there's a thing called kangaroo care. And true kangaroo care, we're talking about 18-ish hours of skin to skin with a caregiver round the clock. So um, taking breaks to pump and go to the bathroom and take a shower and eat and then skin to skin again. Unfortunately, that's not what was happening in my NICU experiences, but I tried to do it as often as they would allow me to. Um, and that's something that if in the future I have to have another baby in the NICU that we would be fighting about potentially um, because the research is out there and it is proven that that is what babies need and it's also what moms and dads need. Um, I think the hardest thing about being a NICU mom um, is that a lot of times they are so focused on the medical needs of the baby that they forget about the emotional needs and um, are also forgetting that you just became a mother and you just became a father and you're trying to learn how to parent your baby and when um, medical staff intervenes it's difficult to to feel like you have a say in your child's care um, and that your voice is being heard and that you're useful um, so that's something that I think we could improve upon in hospitals is helping parents feel like parents and making sure that they're heard and that they understand um, what's best for their baby but that ultimately they get to decide how they would like their care to look for their child um, Trust me, I'm not dissing on doctors. I don't even know if Layla would be here if we hadn't had the care that we had in the NICU. But at one point I was told that I didn't want to take my baby home because she would be keeping me up all night. And as long as she was in the hospital, I got to go home and sleep. So why would I want to take her home? Um, was heartbreaking. I mean, I can still see this nurse's face that I wanted to punch so badly. Um, it's just not helpful to say things like that. Um, family, friends, I mean, if you've never had a baby in the NICU, it's hard. Um, so you wanna take care of those parents as, as best you can. Bring them meals, ask them if there's anything you can do for them. Um, money for gas going back and forth to the hospital um, I mean the list goes on and on but we, we really need to focus on supporting parents um, to get through those those tough days in the NICU so I really encourage you to push for that skin to skin time skin to skin time is going to help your baby heal faster and it's also going to help you um, stimulate milk production. I also really encourage that dads also do skin to skin time with their babies. Justin had a really hard time with bonding with our first baby because he really couldn't be with her that much. He was working, she was in the hospital, um, and then I was hogging her. Like, I admit it, I really was, if, if they would let us hold the baby, it was like, I'm gonna hold the baby now. Um, but dads need that time too. If I can encourage you at all, I would say try to remember dad um, and hopefully you guys can get through it together. Introducing pacifiers and bottles before breastfeeding can um, cause some, you know, I don't wanna say nipple confusion. I think they really do know the difference, but sometimes it's more of a nipple preference. Um, 
So at least in the NICUs that, at least in the NICU that I was in with Layla, they really pushed that. First they have to take a binky, then they take a bottle, then they can try the breast. Um, and I would really challenge that thinking. And um, with my second baby, she never got a pacifier. And as soon as she was able to take a bottle, um, I demanded that she be breastfed and she latched on great. She got plenty of milk from me and we never had to supplement. So the sooner you can get breastfeeding established and the more you can um, kind of kick those pacifiers to the curb, you know, as long as, as the baby has access to the breast, they don't need a pacifier. If for some reason you can't be breastfeeding on demand, then by all means, please soothe those babies however you can. Um, but what we're looking for is all access pass to the breast and then um, you're gonna have a much more, um, then you're gonna have a much easier time being able to breastfeed. So because they wouldn't let me nurse my baby very frequently, I never really produced very much milk. I was pumping around the clock, I was seeing a lactation consultant. Um, I was, you know, doing all the tricks to try to get my supply up, taking different supplements. Um, I rented a hospital grade pump, I actually rented two different kinds of pumps. And my supply just would not increase. So when my baby came home, I was nursing her twice a day at the hospital, morning and night and then pumping the rest. So when she came home, she was on about half breast milk and half formula. And they also wanted me to use what they call a fortifier, which is where you're adding formula to the breast milk to make it more calorically dense so that the baby can put on weight faster because they've got some catching up to do. Um, in hindsight, I don't, I don't think I would have messed with the fortifier. You have to make your own choices as they come to you. Um, but man, that Dr. Jack Newman, he talks about that too. So, um, so getting back to low supply, she came home on half formula, half breast milk, um, and really was not nursing very well. Um, she was used to the bottle um, and just would sleep at the breast. So I worked with a lactation consultant, like I said, and she was fairly helpful with some tips. And I worked with my chiropractor, and my chiropractor specializes in babies and pregnant women, so she knows a thing or two. <laughs> and she was really instrumental in just believing in me and believing that I could make milk. Um, I I think everybody else had given up and wanted me to accept the fact that she was gonna have to be formula fed. Um, but for me, when I breastfed my baby, it made me feel like her mother. It made me feel like I had a purpose as her mother. It made me feel like I was what was best for her. And formula feeding made me feel like Anybody could take care of my baby. She didn't need me. Um, not saying that that's how everyone feels, but that's how I felt. And so breastfeeding was extremely important to me. I also knew that as a premature baby, she needed immunities from my milk more than a full-term baby would even need them. Um, so I was very concerned that she would get sick and end up back in the hospital. And that was like worst thing ever in my mind. Um, so I was more than determined to get her fully breastfeeding and get off formula. So in our next video, we're going to talk about low supply and some of the things that I found helpful and how I was able to get her completely off of formula. And she did end up being exclusively breastfed from the time she was about three months old until she weaned around 22 months. So I hope you'll join me next week for that video. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been 
a crazy week here. Um, I'm, if you are a mama who's going through a NICU situation, my heart goes out to you. There is no right or wrong way to do it. Um, you are really in survival mode and my hat goes off to you. Um, if you ever need somebody to talk to, please reach out and I would be more than happy to be a listening ear and give any advice that I can to help you through your situation. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll stay tuned next week and um, join me as we continue to talk about breastfeeding challenges. And I hope that you have a blessed Christmas and we'll see you next week. Bye.